Hi, today I will recap the first episode of the anime. I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too. There were thuds of footsteps when he heard a girl voice shouting for help and asking some people to stop. He looked around as his eyes settled on three guys who were harassing a girl and she had refused them more than once and wanted to go home, but the guys were leeringly insisting that they were not going to do anything to her. The girl kept pleading to them when he interrupted them but they didn't reply and he called out in a loud voice again, which made them stop and turn around to look at him. Then one of the guys called out and asked what he wants and asked if he had any business with them, but he visibly shivered and stammered saying it seemed like the girl didn't like what they were doing to her, and they yelled in unison about how it didn't concern him until one of them said he didn't like the look in his eyes and started hitting him badly with blood spurting out from his body, while the girl could only stand in shock and watch in fear as the police sirens could be heard from afar. He laid there in pain while the three guys spoke amongst themselves and ran away. Just as the police arrived, the girl quickly ran to him and asked if he was alright, telling him to hold her shoulder and lean on him, but he rejected her help and said that, in all honesty, that he was alright and left, while the police and the girl watched him leave. While walking home, he thought that those in trouble must be treated with kindness, as he had a flashback to his discussion with his father about kindness, he stopped in front of his house, as he considered that it must be his reclusive appearance that annoyed people around him, and that caused a flashback to when he was younger and his classmates insultingly mocked him and like that wasn't enough, even his parents alienated him and his siblings never treated him right, and this episode continued until middle school, where the bullying seemed to have escalated again. All through his life, it was only his grandfather who had showed him affections, and had always said to him, Yuya, no matter what adversity you may face, don't let it beat you that even if life was tough and you should still treat people with kindness, which would allow happiness to find him too. Yuya had seen pitifully crying and calling for his grandfather who lay dead. The grandfather left him the house and all of his possessions, but his parents tried to take it away from him which wasn't possible as his grandfather had left a thorough groundwork, and that made them gave up, but in exchange they renounced any involvement in his upbringing and that made him live there alone and work part-time jobs. At the 61st graduation ceremony, everyone was looking radiant and talking with themselves but Yue stood in a corner and could be seen opening a book which was filled with insulting words and he closed it with tears in his eyes and started walking away alone and was running until he got pushed down by some guys, with one of them asking if he was trying to dodge his responsibilities there and still continued saying, even if he had graduated from middle school, he would still be repeating a year as his sandbag forever. Yume was on the ground speaking in pain that he had to get to his job of paper deliveries, but he was countered by the guy who insulted him about his appearance and started beating him up as two people watched from afar and smiled in satisfaction. It was already evening when Yue stood up from the ground and picked up his torn book. A man yelled at him for being late and said he had already called in a replacement but Yue could only apologize and the man answered that starting from the next day, he didn't have to come in anymore. Later that night, Yue thanked God for his meal and ate while he stopped to stare at his reflection. And this caused him to go into a fit of anger crying as he hit a mirror and shattered it while questioning the point of graduating as his hands dripped blood then he thought that nothing was ever going to change, pondering about what he was supposed to do as he hit a wall which turned out to be a secret door as he fell through it. Yumi was surprised and questioned about what brought about the existence of the room as he looked around the room and recalled that his grandfather used to travel to places around the world and brought back different strange souvenirs and figured that he left them inside that secret room and he made to walk around the room when he came across a strange unknown door which he thought about what it was for as he pushed it open wanting to go in when it brought up a window which shocked and made him fall. It showed a different world on the window which was something that he didn't believe and that made him go back to confirm the room he left behind and return to the unknown door, which showed that it was a link to another world and could be utilized for many functions but couldn't be destroyed. Yuya thought that it could be an appraisal skill and pointed that he could check out the titles which led to it splitting open into more windows. He read the menu functions and wondered if it meant that he was the only one who could use the door to another world, but asserted that he really didn't understand the asset conversion thing while thinking that it resembled a video game that would bring up his stats, which was at 1%. But he tried to make sense of it as related to a video game. He apparently entered it and that brought him to a new place where he opened a window and was blessed with the sight of beautiful nature, while thinking that it was really a different world, which wasn't Earth, when his eyes landed on a piece of paper on the table, and then he picked it up but couldn't read it and wondered if it was a language of that world. The window showed a language comprehension it could read, write, and understand all languages, which Yuya considered as a useful skill, and that enabled him to learn what was on the paper which said, basically, the owner of the house was nearing the end of their life, 
and that made them leave the right of ownership of the house and every possession that it contained to whoever the individual was that happened to find it, which made Yue wonder if he had suddenly become the owner of the house as he read on. And as the ownership will automatically update through a magic entrance which anyone other than the owner would have it impossible to enter. Plus the owner could use magic and other stuff, while Yuya wondered about whom the sage was supposed to be. There was a lot of battle weapons in the room, Yuya picked up a sword and stared at it saying it was an impressive sword, and a window popped out showing it form and characteristics that said it was an ominous word, which was the pinnacle of sword, as the blade would always shine without growing dull, and its sharpness would always retain its two condition and could cut through anything, but that was only possible when it was wielded by a contractor. It was also not for sale. The contractor was Yue Tenju. Yue was surprised as he thought that it was more dangerous than expected. He peeped out of the house and gasped in wonder, asking if it was still recognized as part of the house and a window status opened showing that everything within the fence constituted as the owner's house, and that made him realize that there was no need to hold back. He gleefully ran around the whole area and stumbled with the sword when a skill window came up for swordmanship, with a maximum proficiency of 10, and he pondered that calling himself a beginner felt a little presumptuous and thought that if he was able to acquire it, because of the effects of the otherworld nature, he ran and brought another battle weapon which was called the Absolute Spear. It surpassed the Divine Spear, and was completely unique as it was said to be able to pierce through anything when used by its contractor and couldn't break apart. And he ran in to bring another battle weapon, which was the Death Scythe, which could kill even God, could slice through anything that the contractor wished, and any cut it made would be fatal, no matter how small it was, and these was the repeated cycle of bringing out various types of weapons, which showed its forms and characteristics, and after he had tried them, all considered that they were all insanely dangerous, then a window opened up with his charts about his skill, capabilities and titles while he mentioned that it didn't make sense even as a window popped up again that he had acquired a martial arts skill of 1%. Then he started putting all the weapons through the void that opened saying that every weapon disappeared with its magic. He tried to put on the last one, which was the spear when a monster appeared on the other side of the fence which made him scream in fright as he thought that no one could get in there except for him. The monster kept growling and hitting the fence as he pondered about the monster's identity, which a window status showed it to be known as a bloody ogre of a level of 300 hole. He watched as it pulled out a tree from its roots and raised it high as it watched him and threw it down upon the house which was protected by the barricade that blocked it and Yuya yelled in terror, but it didn't break the barricade. He stood up and thought if he should throw the spear, and made up his mind as he took a fighter stance and threw it so hard that it pierced through the bloody ogre and killed it. He stood stunned until the spear returned to his hand, which made him fall then to his knees while staring shakily at his hands, and as the body of the monster dissipated then a window popped up with his charts, which showed his level to be that of a 100 and also an increase in his skills rate, and he moved towards the monster body where he saw an object and picked it up while the window popped up with its forms, the great fang of the bloodstained ogre, which had a piercing power to match the ogre bite strength, and with modifications could be used to make a sharp and sturdy object of a weapon, and the stone with other objects which had acquired points and Yuya thought he could distribute them as he seemed fit. Later in the night, his body undergoes changes and wakes up to a completely different man. Unfortunately, he is unable to see himself in the broken mirror. As no clothes fit him anymore, he uses the skills acquired from the last night to get new uniform. He goes back again and looks at different vegetables in the backyard. Yuya enjoys cooking the vegetables and killing monsters including slimes and goblins. Next day, everyone looks at him hysterically when he is walking to school. In the classroom, he is approached by the bullies again. He introduces himself as Yuya, and everyone is shocked. So he rushes to the washroom and is shocked to see his good-looking face. The bullies corner him and ask him about the drastic changes in his physical appearance. He tries to explain and suddenly a car parks in front of them. A girl comes out and says hello to him, much to his shock. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share the video and subscribe to the channel.